What's good, Josh? Boy Ross back at again with another video. So we're gonna check out 10 minutes of WWE wrestlers stealing finishers. It's one of those things where sometimes a wrestler will steal another wrestler's finisher. And a lot of times when they do that, the wrestler's finisher that they stole doesn't actually put away the wrestler. If you guys notice that, it's rare that you see someone steal someone's finisher and then the finisher that they stole they actually put them away with said finisher which is kind of crazy when you think about it usually they kick out of it their own finisher which is crazy so we're gonna check out some of these times wrestlers stole other wrestler finishers i don't know how many times i'm gonna say finisher in this video appreciate all love and support you guys are shown on channels by tap out corner let's get right into this one finisher <laughs> alexa oh my god alexa's got lacy right here in front of us again oh, and man. a sister abigail to lacy evans Stealing another wrestler's finisher can either be disrespectful oh, or a heartfelt tribute. Rollins, and there's Edge. Look at this. Glam, slam. That was a nice, that was a nice either little way, touch. It's always cool seeing an iconic finisher used by someone else, which happened early in 2021. The year started off strong with the return of Goldberg. The master of the jackhammer immediately went after the WWE champion, Drew McIntyre. The two exchanged heated words and ultimately agreed to fight each other at the Royal Rumble. Before the match even started, Drew McIntyre took a page out of his opponent's playbook and hit Goldberg with a spear. Mm. Don't worry, Goldberg made up for it by hitting McIntyre with several spears of his own. Of course. Despite that, it wasn't <laughs> enough to keep Drew down, and the Scottish Warrior beat Goldberg and retained the WWE Championship. Wish it was in front of a crowd. Shortly after WrestleMania 37, Matt Riddle suggested he and Randy Orton form a tag team. Orton was skeptical at first, but eventually warmed up to the idea. Now that he had a new tag team partner, Matt Riddle decided to pay tribute to the Apex Predator. <laughs> like, don't Riddle hug was me, wrestling bro. <laughs> a match against Xavier Woods, but was having some trouble putting Woods away. After Xavier escaped from the Bro Derek, Matt Riddle suddenly struck with an RKO. RKO yeah. It did the job, and Matt Riddle had his hand raised. Matt Riddle loved performing the RKO so much, he used the move several times during the Money mm -hmm. Ladder match. He even pounded the mat, just like Randy Orton would. We miss you, Randy. The week after Matt Riddle wrestled Xavier Woods, we it miss was you, Randy man. Orton's turn to take on the New Day member. Even though Randy Orton is a legend, Xavier Woods still proved to be a challenge for the Viper. Since it worked well for his tag team partner, Orton decided to borrow Matt Riddle's finisher. The Apex Predator surprised Xavier Woods with a bro Derek, which, which is allowed cool. Randy Orton to put his opponent away <laughs> once and for all. After defeating John Morrison, Damian Priest would help reveal that The Miz had been faking his leg injury. This set up a match between Priest and the A-lister the next week. Before the match started, Sheamus, Damian Priest's SummerSlam opponent, came out to watch. Priest wasn't phased by the Celtic Warrior's appearance and decided to send a message. To end the match, Damian Priest stole Sheamus' finisher, Bro Kick, and even mocked the Celtic Warrior by beating his chest. <laughs> Their match at SummerSlam was- And here's the thing, like I said, at the beginning of the video, when they use it on their opponents, like the person's actual finisher, they rarely put them away. But if they, in this certain situations, use it on other people, they end up putting them away, which is weird when you think about it. It's like, uh, you can't beat me with my own finisher. I'm the only one that knows how to effectively use it on myself. <laughs> was phenomenal, but everyone knew this wasn't the end of Edge and Seth Rollins' rivalry. Mm -mm. Several weeks after their first match, the Raynar Superstar and the Monday Night Messiah fought again inside Madison Square Garden. As on they SmackDown. say, sometimes you gotta fight fire with this fire. This was a good match. And during the match, that's exactly what Edge did. Great after view. After pulling Rollins off the rope, the Raynar Superstar planted Seth with the pedigree. Mm -hmm. Luckily for Rollins, he was able to kick out and eventually won the match, but this rivalry still wasn't over. Mm. Great view. Edge and Seth had a third and final yeah. match inside Ooh, Hell in a Cell. So good. The rivalry had gotten pretty heated and personal, and it only got worse during this fight. Rather than steal one of Edge's own moves, Rawls said steal one from Edge's best friend, Christian. The Monday Night Messiah twisted Edge's body around and mm -hmm. hit the kill switch, laughing as he did it. Yep. Rollins should have soaked it in while he was on top, because Edge was going to get some sweet revenge. After a long and uh. battle, the Radar Superstar had enough. He placed his opponent on oh, the chair and so ended good. the match by defeating Seth Rollins yeah. with Rollins' you know what? finisher. I take that back. It, it, it does happen. I forgot he did beat him with the curb stomp. <laughs> onto a steel chair so i uh, it it's it does happen but it's rare it's very rare i stand correct i i did forget he curb stomped him into oblivion but it does happen where sometimes the opponent 
that uses the other opponent's finisher actually wins with it, but it's super, super rare. Usually they just kick out of his. It's one of those things like, a, is he going to get beat by his own move? And he usually kick out. But this time, I mean, he got curb stomp onto a steel chair. He shouldn't be kicking out of that. <laughs> the curb stomp. Cody Rhodes and Seth Rollins' Hell in a Cell match was absolutely. What's crazy? And I was just thinking this. Seth, outside of the Hell in a Cell he had with um with um the Fiend, his other Hell in a Cell matches have been fucking great. That's the one blemish on his Hell in a Cell like record. Even though he, well, it was a no contest. The the, the ref called it off. All his other Hell in a Cell matches have actually been pretty good. That's the only one. Him versus The Fiend was god-awful. This, all the other ones, were actually pretty good. So that's it's crazy to think about. Absolutely brutal. Both men threw everything they had at each other, and even some stuff that wasn't theirs. Seth tried to hit the pedigree, but Cody reversed it and hit a pedigree mm -hmm. of his own. Rollins made sure to get back at him later in the match. When Rhodes went for his finisher, Crossroads, Seth countered and used Cody's own move against him. Mm -hmm. That was cool, but it wasn't nearly as cool as what Edge did at Ooh, Clash of the Castle. Such a at good match. Event, Edge and Rey Mysterio teamed good up to pay -per -view fight event. Day, Damian Priest and Finn Balor. The match had a lot of insane and awesome this was action. A fun but the match, craziest bro. part was near the end. Edge dropped Finn on the middle rope, setting Balor up perfectly yep, for a 6 six one nine, nine. from the Radar Superstar. <laughs> that was amazing to see, but unfortunately, it only got a two count. This isn't the only finisher Edge stole in 2022, as you'll soon see. If we're talking about stolen finishers, we need to bring up Logan Paul. Mm -hmm. The man is the master of borrowing WWE finishers. Yep. When the social media star was introduced as the Miz. Because he doesn't partner, technically have one right now. With Ray and Dominic Mysterio. This led to Paul taking out Dom with the Mrs. Finisher, the skull crushing finale. Ironically, about five months later, Logan would use the same move against the A-lister. At SummerSlam, the mm -hmm. Miz and Paul fought each other one on one. Both men pulled all the stops, which was made clear when Logan Paul got on the top rope and hit the Miz with a phenomenal forearm. Mm -hmm. That was pretty cool. But what was downright humiliating was what Logan Paul did at the end. After almost accidentally knocking on his His buckshot lariat is fucking it's pretty good. <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you. He is like a creative character. He does not have a traditional finisher. He just hits everybody else's finisher. And it actually looks pretty good. He still shouldn't win Money in the Bank, though. I'm filming this before Money in the Bank. So I'm probably going to drop this after Money in the Bank. So hopefully, when you guys are seeing this, he didn't win. I hope he doesn't win. Uh, we'll see. <laughs> Whenever this gets posted, y'all let me know if my predictions was correct. I hope he didn't win. <laughs> wife, The Miz was caught by his former tag team partner and given a skull crushing finale. Logan Paul beat The Miz using the A-lister's own finisher. Also, it's worth mentioning that Logan Paul- You know what? I stand corrected. There's more. <laughs> There's another instance. He beat him with his own finisher. <laughs> I stand corrected at the beginning of this video. I definitely- do not remember as many people winning with other people's finisher, but in this case, Logan doesn't have a finisher, so I guess I stand corrected. That's two people that we've seen. <laughs> Paul's first WWE match, he not only used Eddie Guerrero's Three Amigos, but also used Latino Heat's yep. Frog Splash. Back to The Miz. Before he teamed up with Logan Paul, the most must-see WWE superstar teamed up with his wife, Maurice, to take on Edge and Beth Phoenix. Another the one with Edge. Each other <laughs> at the Royal Rumble, where some finisher stealing occurred. Mm -hmm. In the climax of the match, Beth Phoenix borrowed her husband's finisher yep. by spearing Maurice. Edge then hit The Miz with the Glam Slam, mm -hmm. which shut down the moneymaker and got them the win. As soon as Matt Riddle started teaming with Randy Orton, the original bro start hitting the RKO whenever he could. Real continued to do so in 2022 mm -hmm. and create some truly spectacular That was moments, a beautiful like RKO. Like when he struck from out of nowhere and caught Montez Ford Whoop! in midair. However, while Matt Riddle was still in the RKO, someone That was a good one too against Roman Reigns. Bro Derek. At Clash of the Castle, Real faced Seth Rollins. During the match, Real caused opponent in the triangle choke. Seth got out of it by stealing mm -hmm. one of Matt Riddle's moves, the Bro Derek. Luckily for the original Bro, he was able to kick out, but he still ended up losing yeah. the match. Later that same night, we saw some more finisher thievery. Drew McIntyre faced Roman Reigns in one of the Scottish Warriors' biggest matches of his career. For Drew sure. Drew used everything he had to win. This is such a good Roman match, Reigns. bro. The Tribal Chief stole his cousin's finisher when he planted McIntyre mm -hmm. with the rock bottom. Unfortunately, Roman didn't hit the people's elbow. A little later, Reigns had the tables turned on him. As the two beasts were slugging it out, Fun Drew match, McIntyre bro. dodged a Superman punch and then countered with a spear. Mm -hmm. It was impressive, but it didn't get the win. I thought it was, for a second, I was like, oh, 
is he are they about to do this are they about to pull the chicken here or when he hit that spear i was like oh my god are they about to do this scottish warrior crumbled to the head of the table at backlash edge and randy orton faced off i knew this match was going to be in here because they stole so many other wrestlers finishers it was ridiculous <laughs> the quote greatest wrestling match ever but fitting with that label the match did feature several of the greatest finishing moves Randy Orton was the first to borrow someone else's finisher mm -hmm. when he hit Edge with the angle slam. Oh, oh. The, Olympic slam by Orton. Oh. the only thing I don't like about this is they use all these other wrestlers' finishers, which is cool, but at the same time, you you kicking out of all of them, so you don't make their finishers look that effective. They just look like cool moves that oh, I recognize that, I recognize that, and plus they were doing too much with the greatest wrestling match ever they just, they were it wasn't gonna live up to that it was a good match but it wasn't the greatest wrestling match ever I, I hate when wwe try to hop on a wave and like they they overdo it so that was my only gripe about this match is yeah you're using everybody else's finishers that we recognize but they're not putting away the person so it's just like why do it you know what i'm saying i don't know about you but i thought that fit really well Kurt Angle is one of the greatest wrestlers ever, so seeing his finisher in the match was a nice reference. It's cool. A little but later, I Edge just, decided to do they, the same and borrowed a move from one of his best friends. Oh, thought about the power slam. Thought about the power slam. Whoa. Oh, prettier. I'm prettier. Oh, After getting hit by the kill switch, Randy Orton responded by using a finisher from his former mentor's move set. Of course. Smug look on Randy Orton's face. His mentor, Triple H, is angry. Oh. Edge refused to stay down and bounced right back by nailing the Apex Predator with a rock Drop bottom. Drop on him, yeah. Despite all the stolen finishers, it was ultimately Randy Orton's own punk kick that won the match. Way back at the start of Which 2020, makes sense. Randy Orton was originally going to face AJ Styles at WrestleMania. So I will wait to WrestleMania and not only make you tap out, but retire you. On the January 6th episode of Raw, AJ Styles took on Akira Tozawa. During the match, AJ wanted to send a message to the Viper of course. and decided to use Orton's signature DDT <laughs> to make it loud and clear, be a, uh, a phenomenal uh, one Tozawa. that ended the match with an RKO. With the Viper oh, and no, AJ Styles with an RKO! The next week, both men were able to get their hands on each other in a triple threat match, also involving Drew McIntyre. To throw salt into the wound, AJ decided to hit Randy Orton with a rope hang DDT. Just like the week before, Styles is going to follow up with the <laughs> but Orton countered and decided to use AJ's own finisher against him. Are you kidding me? No way! Orton Styles Clash! Unfortunately, it wasn't enough to get the pinfall, and Matt <laughs> was ultimately the one who had his arm raised. Both Rey Mysterio and Seth Rollins threw a lot at each other when they faced off in their infamous eye for an eye match. <sighs> After hitting the Monday Night Messiah with just about everything he had, Mysterio decided to borrow a move from Seth's playbook. Trying to cover his damaged eye, and Mysterio stop. Unfortunately, the curb stop wasn't enough, and Ray ended up losing the match. At Survivor Series, I'm sorry, man. It's just... That was a thing we had to all sit through. That was a thing. <laughs> the Raw and SmackDown tag team champions, the New Day and the Street Profits, respectively, squared off to see which brand had the better tag team. The two sides had been fighting for well over 10 minutes, with neither one able to get the win, so Montez Ford decided to try a different tactic. Kofi went for trouble in paradise, Ford able to dunk it, oh my god, was that trouble in paradise? Hitting the trouble in paradise that was pretty seemed cool. to do the trick, as the Street Profits were ultimately able to pick up the win. Just one day after returning at the Royal Rumble, Edge was viciously attacked oh. by Randy Orton. This put Great him back segment. on the shelf, but after the Viper attacked oh his wife, my God. Oh. the Raider superstar was forced to come back. Oh, Orton this is so good. <laughs> his tag team partner, but Edge wasn't having it. Oh, that was cool. After hitting Randy Orton. Bro, that was so cool. I ain't gonna lie to you. That exchange, this way he... He caught him in mid-air. Oh, that was nice. His own finisher, MVP got involved, which proved to be a big mistake. Oh, the oh, it, didn't, it didn't look that good because MVP didn't really sell it the way he took it. It didn't really look that good. Um, but yeah, man. 
I stand corrected. There have been a few times. <laughs> it's rare. I will say that it, it's rare that <laughs> the, it, when you hit someone with their finisher that they actually lose the match from it. It does happen, but it's very, very rare. Um, in the case of Logan, for it makes sense because he doesn't have a traditional finisher yet. So everybody's finishers is available to him if he can hit it, you know, hit it correctly. So, yeah, man, this was definitely great. Comment down below. Let me know what's your favorite instance of a wrestler taking someone else's finisher, man, and actually using it. Let me know down below or even submission hold. I'll even put that into the mix. But I appreciate all the love and support you guys showing on channel Road to 150K. And I'm still getting the speed of YouTube wrestling champion of the world. Appreciate y'all kicking with me. See you on the next one. Peace.